Welcome to Creative Biolabs. Over the last 20 years, Creative Biolabs has become the leader in antibody drug discovery and manufacturing, providing high-quality service to customers in academia and industry fields all over the world. Now, we are able to offer solutions to accelerate drug discovery and development by deploying artificial intelligence technologies. Today, we will briefly introduce AI augmented drug discovery through this video, which is divided into four main parts, AI and drug discovery, how AI works, AI models used in drug discovery, and AI and creative biolabs. Part 1, AI and drug discovery. The process of refining promising compounds into drug candidates is both expensive and time-consuming because it is often not known which chemical structures will have both the desired biological effects and the properties needed to be effective drugs. Data show that the average cost of bringing a new drug to market is currently $2.6 billion. In addition, even when a new drug candidate shows potential in laboratory testing, it can still fail when it enters clinical trials. In fact, less than 10% of drug candidates make it to market after Phase 1 trials. Between 2010 and 2017, 76% of new drugs approved by the FDA are small molecule drugs. Because of their very small size, these drugs are more likely to get inside cells and reach targets in the body than larger biological therapies. At the heart of small molecule drug discovery is chemical synthesis, which involves the creation of entirely new molecules through a complex step-by-step -step process. Despite decades of research, this remains a long and laborious process and a key bottleneck in bringing new drugs to the clinic. But advances in AI-based process development offer unprecedented new opportunities to help accelerate this phase and deliver effective drugs to patients faster. Using artificial intelligence and machine learning can help at every stage of the drug discovery process. Companies that use AI to streamline the pharmaceutical process have received more lucrative funding than startups in other healthcare sectors. AI and drug discovery, also known as phase one. The drug discovery process ranges from reading and analyzing already existing literature to testing the ways potential drugs interact with targets. According to report, AI could curb drug discovery costs for companies by as much as 70%. AI in preclinical development, phase 2. The preclinical development phase of drug discovery involves testing potential drug targets on animal models. Using AI in this phase can help trials run smoothly and enable researchers to predict how drugs will interact with animal models more quickly and successfully. AI in clinical trials, phase 3. After making it through the preclinical development phase and receiving approval from the FDA, researchers begin testing the drug with human participants. AI can facilitate participant monitoring during clinical trials, generating a larger set of data more quickly, and aid in participant retention by personalizing the trial experience. AI can recognize hit and lead compounds and provide a quicker validation of the drug target and optimization of the drug structure design. AI can be used effectively in different parts of drug discovery, including drug design, chemical synthesis, drug screening, polypharmacology, and drug repurposing. Part 2, How AI Works Most of the learning tasks and techniques used in drug discovery projects fall into seven categories. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi supervised learning, active learning, reinforcement learning, transfer learning, and multitask learning. Each category has its own characteristic strengths and limitations. Supervised learning Many AI learning algorithms use a supervised learning process in which a set of input data, usually a vector, X, and known responses to the data, the output, also called the label or target, Y, are required, and the goal of the training process is to learn a mapping function from the input to the output in order to correctly predict the class label Y or target value Y for unseen data X. For example, given a library of compounds in which each molecule is labeled as active or inactive, supervised algorithms can be used to learn the relationship between molecular features and biological activities so that new molecules can be predicted to be active or inactive. 
Unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning algorithms are used when there are only input data, x, with no corresponding output variables. In other words, in an unsupervised model, the data is unlabeled. In such a case, it is difficult to define a useful metric of performance for the algorithm. Instead, the process will extract structures from the data, which can be used to cluster the input samples into different groups. The main difference between unsupervised learning and supervised learning is that, in unsupervised learning, no feedback signal is used to evaluate the quality of the potential solutions. Semi-supervised learning Semi-supervised learning is a class of machine learning processes that utilize both labeled and unlabeled data for training, and can be useful when many input data, X, are available, with only relatively few labeled samples, Y. Many real-world drug discovery problems fall into this area. Semi-supervised learning can maximize the use of unlabeled data to either modify or reprioritize hypotheses obtained from limited labeled data alone. Active learning. Active learning is a specialized version of semi-supervised learning in which a learning algorithm can interactively query the user to determine labels for subsets of the unlabeled data from those regions of the input space where the model is least certain of the correct labeling. Reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is a machine learning technique that enables an agent to find the optimal set of actions to promote some outcome using feedback from its own actions and experiences. This goal is accomplished through a combination of analyzing the environment, performing actions to alter that environment, and scoring the outcome of those actions. Transfer learning. Transfer learning describes a family of algorithms that relax the common assumption that the training and test data should be in the same feature space and follow the same distribution. Transfer learning methods learn and transfer informative knowledge from old data domains to new data domains which can improve the predictive performance on the target domain. Multitask learning Multitask learning has gained popularity in recent years in the field of drug discovery. Instead of learning only one task at a time, as in single-task learning, several different but conceptually related tasks that share the same set of features are learned in parallel and make use of a shared internal representation. This concept is particularly attractive for inferring multi-target prediction models. Regarding common learning algorithms, this presentation focuses on several popular algorithms in drug discovery, namely, Bayesian algorithm, instance-based methods, decision tree algorithm, ensemble algorithms, dimensionality reduction algorithm, and artificial neural networks. Bayes' theorem was introduced by British mathematician Thomas Bayes to describe the relationship between two conditional probabilities, such as P, A, B, and P, B, A. P, A, is called the prior probability, which is a judgment of the probability of event A before the occurrence of event B. P, A, B, is called the posterior probability, which is a re-evaluation of the probability of event A after the occurrence of event B. P, B, slash A divided by p, b, is called the likelihood function, which is an adjustment factor that makes the predicted probability closer to the true probability. Lou et al. built a rule-embedded, naive Bayesian classifier, whose flow chart is shown in the right figure. They developed the predictive models through a Bayesian approach based on the unique Comdicom database and provided a web service. Rule-embedded further reduces the number of false negatives. Instance-based methods are a family of lazy learning algorithms in which all training examples are stored and generalization is postponed until a new query instance is classified. The target function is approximated directly from the training instances through the analysis of the relationship between instance and instances seen in the training set. The most basic example of instance-based methods is the KNN method, short for K-nearest neighbor which assumes that each instance corresponds to a point in an n-dimensional space. Given a query instance, its k-nearest neighbors, shown in figure A, are defined as the data points with the k-smallest distances. Then, the target function is evaluated for the nearest neighbor list. A KNN method either takes a vote among its k-nearest neighbors for a discrete-valued target function or computes the mean of f-values of k-nearest neighbors for real-valued target functions. 
The self-organizing map, also called SOM, is another example of the instance-based methods. The SOM is a special class of neural networks based on competitive learning, as contrasted with error correction learning in other neural networks. The training process itself takes unlabeled data and maps them from a continuous, high-dimensional input space to a discrete, low-dimensional output space specified by the user. A particularly useful feature of this method is that, when employed with a sufficiently large number of nodes, it can preserve topological characteristics of the input space, i.e., input data that are close together in the input space will also be close in the output space. Another instance-based method is the SVM, which can perform both classification and regression tasks. The idea of the SVM is that training data that are non-linearly separable in their original, low-dimensional input space can be separated in a higher-dimensional latent space, which is constructed through mapping. SVM fits a nonlinear separation in the original space without ever actually locating each point in the transformed high-dimensional space. Decision tree, abbreviated to DT, is a type of tree-shaped representations of chains of decisions that can be used to classify, or predict values for, input data. They are suitable for both categorical and continuous input and output variables. Given a training data set represented in the root node, a DT model splits the population of data into two or more subsets. The splitting will continue to divide these into progressively smaller subsets by posing an either-or scenario until an outcome is encountered. Like many other models, tree-based models are plagued by bias and variance. A powerful way to alleviate this problem is to use an ensemble approach to transform DT into an RF model short for random forest, which operates by building a large number of decision trees at training time. Ensemble learning employs the same learning algorithm to train multiple predictive models, improving their accuracy and reliability compared to their single model instances. It often allows modelers to obtain an idea of the fragility of the model or its dependency on certain data points, which can help when deciding which new data sets should be acquired and with what priority. Some of the commonly used ensemble algorithms include bagging, boosting, and stacking. Bagging reduces the variance of a prediction by combining multiple models trained on different subsamples of the same data set. The process includes, first, creating multiple data sets drawn from the original data, second, training multiple classifiers on each data set, and third, combining all models to generate a single response value, example, mean, median, or mode, depending on the problem at hand. Boosting reduces bias and variance by combining insights from a number of weak learners to form a comparatively strong learner. It is an ensemble technique requiring relatively large data sets. As displayed in Figure B, boosting begins with the training of a first learner on a data set through random sampling with replacement from weighted data followed by the sequential creation of multiple learners that attempt to correct the errors of the previous learners until the training set is perfectly modeled or a maximum number of models is reached. The final prediction is an accuracy-weighted average of all learners. The individual variables of a data set are often information-poor or strongly correlated. Dimensionality reduction algorithms reduce the number of variables by mapping the data into a new space with fewer dimensions than the original space. Principal Component Analysis PCA, is a popular technique for analyzing large datasets containing a high number of dimensions slash features per observation, increasing the interpretability of data while preserving the maximum amount of information, and enabling the visualization of multidimensional data. Linear Discriminate Analysis, LDA, is a generalization of Fisher's Linear Discriminate, a method used in statistics, pattern recognition, and machine learning to find a linear combination of features that characterizes or separates two or more classes of objects or events. As an unsupervised method, PCA describes the directions in the projected space with maximal variance. LDA is supervised and pursues the projection directions that are most effective in discriminating between output classes. Artificial neural networks, ANNs, are composed of interconnected artificial neurons that act as basic information processing units. Figure A displays a neuron in more detail. 
The product of the input vector and the neuron weights is combined with a bias term and passed through an activation function to generate an output. A neuron can be regarded as a function that maps an input vector to an output vector. A typical ANN architecture contains many artificial neurons arranged in a series of layers, the input layer, an output layer, i.e., the top layer, which generates a desired prediction, covering absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion and toxicity properties, activity, and a vector of fingerprint. One or more hidden layers are also included in the typical ANN architecture where the intermediate representations of the input data are transformed. A deep neural network, known as DNN, shown in figure B, refers to an ANN that has several hidden layers. For example, given a molecular substructure fingerprint representation, for instance, DNNs are capable of learning that a given pattern of bits corresponds to a given feature and that to a certain biological activity. This ability to abstract information, and to generalize, is behind much of the success of these methods. Part 3 – AI Models Used in Drug Discovery DeepVS – Boosting Docking-Based Virtual Screening with DL The deep neural network that is introduced, DeepVS, uses the output of a docking program and learns how to extract relevant features from basic data. The output of a docking program, top, is fed into a CNN, and the network extracts features from basic structural data such as distances, atom types, and atomic partial charges that are suited to distinguish between actives and decoys. The concept of atom and amino acid embeddings is introduced into the network. A distributed vector representation of the protein minus ligand complex is generated through representing the compound as a group of local atom contexts and by further processing and summarizing the information in a convolutional layer. Pereira et al. used DeepVS for the docking of 40 receptors and 2,950 ligands, which showed exceptional performance when 95,000 decoys were tested against these receptors. Deep Affinity is a deep learning method used to measure drug target binding affinity. Under novel representations of structurally annotated protein sequences, a semi-supervised deep learning model that unifies recurrent and convolutional neural networks has been proposed to exploit both unlabeled and labeled data for jointly encoding molecular representations and predicting affinities. Performances for new protein classes with few labeled data are further improved by transfer learning. DeepTox is a pipeline for predicting the toxic effects of compounds, which can identify static and dynamic features within the chemical descriptors of the molecules, such as molecular weight and van der Waals volume, and could efficiently predict the toxicity of a molecule based on predefined 2,500 toxicophore features. In the Tox 21 data challenge, DeepTox had the highest performance of all the computational methods that won the grand challenge, including the nuclear receptor panel the stress response panel, and six single analyses. The researchers found that deep learning excelled in toxicity prediction and outperformed many other computational methods. Specifically, deep tox includes first, cleaning and quality control of data containing chemical descriptions of compounds, second, creation of chemical descriptors as input features to the model, third, model selection, including the selection of features needed for model classes, fourth, evaluation of model quality to select the best model, and fifth, combination of models to integrate predictors. Quantitative structure activity relationship, namely, QSAR-based computational model, can quickly predict large numbers of compounds or simple physicochemical parameters. QSAR-based models also face problems such as small training sets, experimental data error in training sets, and lack of experimental validations. To overcome these challenges, recently developed AI approaches, such as DL and relevant modeling studies, can be implemented for safety and efficacy evaluations of drug molecules based on big data modeling and analysis. In 2012, Merck supported a XAR ML challenge that showed significant predictivity compared with traditional ML approaches for 15 absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, and toxicity data sets of drug candidates. Particularly, several RF-based regression LBVS models have been established, such as Profile QSAR 
This RF algorithm enables an amenable chemical and biological interpretation with regard to the molecular descriptors and structural motifs considered important by the model. Bayesian algorithms are another well-known method for constructing QSAR models. Previously, this approach has been used to identify inhibitors of general and specific kinases, targets against Alzheimer's disease, G-protein-coupled receptors, Escherichia coli dihydrophilate reductase, gamma-aminobutyric acid type A ionotropic receptor, and mycobacterium tuberculosis, and to discover important structural features of microsomal stability. SVM is another popular method in XAR-based LBVS and has been used, among other applications, for the discovery of inhibitors of cathepsin L and factor XIIA, as well as in the construction of multiple classification models for calocrine 5 inhibitors. Multitask QSAR models classify compounds based on not only their biological effects, but also experimental information. Tenorio Baroto et al. reported the construction of a multitask QSAR model based on ANN. This model classified the data set obtained from multiplexing assays with an accuracy of 92%. Part 4 AI in Creative Biolabs Over the last 20 years, Creative Biolabs has become the leader of antibody drug discovery and manufacturing providing high-quality service to customers in academia and industry fields all over the world. Now, we are able to provide solutions to accelerate drug discovery and development by deploying machine learning technologies. With our experimentally certified AI platform, we are able to offer rapid discovery and development of novel molecules with higher diversity compared with the traditional ways. The AI platform enables discovery and analysis of new antibody clusters, generation of new sequences from existing clusters, accelerated generation of diverse, high-quality antibodies, and rapid generation of new antibody sequences using computational algorithms to help improve affinity, solubility, cross-reactivity, manufacturability, immunogenicity, specificity, and stability. Antibody production through the Phage Showcase platform offers a variety of advantages such as high throughput, high capacity, multiple systems, and customizable screening strategies. AI Augmented Drug Discovery Service at Creative Biolabs includes the following options. Antibody Discovery Services, Creative Biolabs combines state-of-the-art artificial intelligence, big data, and phage display techniques to discover rare antibodies and expand antibody diversity. The submitted antibody sequences maximize the antibody's therapeutic potential while minimizing safety and manufacturing risks. An AI augmented discovery project has increased the number of antibody clusters for HIV GP140 by 13-fold. Antibody screening services Creative Biolabs offer a unique way to find rare antibody clusters and get more candidate antibody sequences by augmenting our data-driven AI screening services. We integrated the published data and different kinds of AI models to train our bespoke algorithm, through which, we can identify the interaction between potential antibodies and disease states, predict antibody antigen binding, create optimized antibody sequences, accelerate antibody drug discovery. For the same target antigen, our in silico screening can be conducted by AI models to identify a safe, suitable, and effective candidate to reduce the delivery time. Antibody Engineering Services Creative Biolabs offers a wide variety of antibody engineering services to quickly and efficiently optimize the existing antibodies via AI based algorithms, such as affinity, solubility, cross reactivity, manufacturability immunogenicity, specificity, and stability. Our service portfolio includes antibody affinity maturation, antibody stability improvement, SCFV-slash-FAB construction, and other antibody specialization and modification services. Small molecule design and optimization, small molecules, a number of low molecular weight compounds, have been considered as perfect targets for designing new drugs in human disease therapy. Currently, we have developed a wide variety of assays for small molecule design and optimization to promote its affinity, specificity, and validity, mainly ranging from in silico molecule screening, molecular modeling, to AI-based molecule optimization. Model Training Data Services 
Creative Biolabs has combined experienced scientists with advanced facilities to provide the best strategy and customized protocols for model training data service, and ultimately, to accelerate novel candidate drug discovery. We can help clients collect training data from different areas. The data will be gathered and checked according to the specific requirement and all data will be loaded into AI models to guide your drug discovery projects. For more details about Creative Biolabs, please visit our website. Thanks for watching.